OL reign. Let's get into yeah. maybe team overview, right? Let people know what uh, how the team is looking heading into the 2022 season. What happened during the off season? I think we got to start with the head coaching position, right? Uh, we heard a lot about uh, different teams needing to uh, go ahead and fill their coaching position. OL Reign kind of maybe beating everybody to the punch, having, uh, having a little bit of a, a mid-season coaching change there. The return of Laura Harvey to the Reign franchise returned in July of 2021, former three-time NWSL coach of the year, uh, retained majority of the assistant coaching staff, right? Sam Lady still with the club, has been with the club since 2013, but the coaching staff fully in place, right, as the offseason kicked off and now as preseason is underway. Some other notable hires, you know, for this franchise, they have a general manager and Nick Perea, a former U.S. Beach Soccer National Team captain, elected member of the U.S. Soccer Athlete Council, and was with Washington Youth Soccer as an executive director. And their finish in 2021, they finished at number two in the standings, but they lost in the uh, semifinals to eventual NWSL champions, Washington Spirit. Falling in the semifinals, just short of a finals appearance, 2-1 was the final in that match. But still ambitious, right? I think we had uh, them up high once again. We did an episode of Attacking Third in December of 2021, our way too early power rankings episode, and we still kept them ranked high, Lisa. Mm -hmm. We had them at number two overall. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, honestly, that December episode feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but right. yeah, we put OL Reign at number two, which is exactly how they finished the 2021 season. And and there's a reason for that. And we're going to kind of dive into all of that. But um, this is a, an interesting roster, an interesting year. I think Laura Harvey has a lot to prove ahead of her. I think that her stepping in in the middle of the 2021 season was really good for this squad. I mean, we saw a lot of coach departures in 2021 and and a lot of new coaches coming in. And for Laura Harvey coming back to OL Reign, she was with Seattle of Reign for so many years, right? I mean, 2013 through 2017. So the fact that she returned was exciting. It was like the perfect fit to the puzzle for Laura Harvey and for this squad. Um, and she took them all the way to second place. I mean, I'm, I'm going to phrase that as a positive. She took oh, yeah. them to second place because she really turned around the season for them. Let's just imagine what she can do with a full season, a full preseason with a, a team and this squad. And, and we're going to dive into it. Who's listed on the roster and what's happening. But um, yeah, we had them at number two. Listen towards the end of this episode, and we'll see where we place them for 2022. Listen, uh, we saw them go on an incredible run in that second yeah. half of 2021, and uh, they fell just short of their goal, obviously. And uh, coming into the offseason that took place, right, with all of the player movement ahead of a double expansion draft, uh, an NWSL draft class, right, that they had to participate in. There was a number of, of acquisitions and moves that they made to try to flesh out the roster in light of, you know, some pretty big losses, which we'll get into as well. But in terms of sort of breakout roster signings, whether it was trades or player acquisitions or quite frankly, uh, you know, new contracts uh, or, or extensions that were signed. Let's take a look at some of the players you are returning to OL Reign. You've got Lauren Barnes, Ciara King, NWSL 2021 MVP Jess Fishlock, Megan Rapino also signing an additional year contract with the uh, franchise that she's been with since 2013. A trade with Chicago Red Stars brought Nikki Stanton into the mix. They made a trade for Veronica Latsko, re signed Sofia Huerta, traded for uh, Phoebe McClernan as well, and Bethany Balser also amongst the players signing a, a contract like uh, Ziara King or Sofia Huerta, a multi year contract, mm -hmm. three years for Balser with this team. Uh, in terms of the biggest losses, said farewell right to uh, the uh, the French trio that uh, came into the mix and helped them out down the stretch Eugenie Le Sommer, uh, Jennifer Marlzen, Sarah Bouadi, all players with Olympic Lyonnais and back in France for their season and uh the retirement the re-retirement maybe I should yeah. say of Stephanie Cox right came out of retirement to play with with the club and then retired 
once more in terms of all of the different signings, right? Maybe the contract extensions, the trades that were made for player acquisition versus the losses that we're taking a look at here with this club, Lisa. What stands out to you across these moves? Uh, a couple other uh, losses included. I mean, Charlie Cruz, uh, Amber Brooks, Leah Pruitt, yeah. Celia, uh, Leah Pruitt and Celia going to Orlando Pride, and then Charlie Cruz and Amber Brooks being waived at the end of the 2021 season. Um, I mean, a lot of moves actually happening, a lot of re signings. And I think that the re signings say a lot, not just about uh, the roster, but about the personnel and about head coach Laura Harvey and and what that these veterans in Megan Rapino, um, Lauren Barnes, Jess Fishlock, what they look at in Laura Harvey as a head coach, kind of what she's willing to do for them and, and what they're willing to do for her because these players are been around and been in this league for a long time, been with this organization and this club for a while through the rebrand and everything. And they're still willing to be there. I think them also locking down a, a standout defender like Sofia Huerta is a huge, huge get for this club. I think Laura Harvey can do some damage with Sofia Huerta. This is uh, when, when Harvey came in in 2021, we started to see more of Sofia Huerta in the outside back position, uh, which is where she thrives. And, and that was Laura Harvey's doing and, and putting her there. Um, but for me, I think the biggest ones are these re-signings in these big veteran players and Jess Fishlock, Megan Rapino, even Sofia Huerta, Bethany Balser, the undrafted 2019 player that became rookie of the year in 2019. This is a team that has a lot of chemistry and they're sticking around. These players are sticking around for another year. Um, uh, the losses that that you mentioned, the, the big players coming over from uh, Olympic Lyon for the loan in 2021, yes, their losses, but also we knew that they were always just a loan. We knew that ELS, Le Sommer, wasn't going to be with O.L. Reign for her entirety of her career or even for 2022. So um, big losses on the pitch, perhaps, but we knew it was coming, right? It, the, this is not a surprise. For you, Sandra, um, is there one signing or loss that kind of outweighs the other that stands out to you the most? You know, I don't know if the if we take a look at the the signings, right, versus the losses, if one maybe cancels out the other. But I think when we're looking in terms of something like familiarity for this club to have going into the 2022 season, they achieve that in mm -hmm. the offseason, right? And I think we saw it with a lot of these contracts that were being issued, and I think they were smart about it as well. The fact of the matter is when you look across this roster, and we'll take a look at that right now when we read things off by position, but there's it's kind of split, right? You've got players who have are veteran players of this club that have been involved in the Rain franchise in some capacity for years. And then you have this sort of middle tier where there are experienced NWSL players, right? Somebody uh, like a Huerta probably fits that mold, right? And that would include some even somebody like a like a Let's Go in that as well. Uh, and then you've got a, a, a slew of uh of new faces, maybe younger prospects, right. That are still carrying over, uh, from that previous season into, into this season as well, right. Along with some of the draft picks that they made, um, you know, during the off season. So I feel really the way they went about implementing these contract extensions, issuing out the new contracts, right. Ensuring yeah. that these veteran players have that, that one year, maybe an option, right. To, to get the band together and have one more crack at it and go on it. Right combined with these longer term contracts right with these other players that they want to continue building with a through a three year contract for for you know king for huerta for for balser players that they really want to lock in right and continue to have as part of this rain franchise maybe this sort of collective three that they can continue to be these faces of this team moving forward. So I, I I don't I know if it cancels it out, but I do like what the franchise did in terms of their player acquisitions and their re-signings. Let's maybe look at it all as a whole. Let's throw out the entire uh, preseason roster by landscape, right, by position. Let's take a look at the goalkeepers. They've got Claudia Dickey, Laurel Ivory, Cosette Morche, Fallon Tulis Joyce. For defenders, they have Lauren Barnes, Ryan Brown, Alana Cook, Madison Hammond, Sam Hyatt, Sofia Huerta, Alyssa Mullinson, Jimena Lopez, 
Phoebe McLernan and Sinclair Miramontes. For midfielders, Angelina, Olivia Athens, Marley Canales, Jess Fishlock, Rose Lavelle, Quinn, Nikki Stanton, Olivia Van Der, Van Der Jet, excuse me. Uh, for forwards, Bethany Balser, Jeanette Kajan, Ziara King, Veronica Latsko, Megan Rapino, and Ali. Why, I think something that sticks out there immediately, right? Lisa, when we're looking at uh, when we're looking at the roster as a whole, but when we're talking about biggest acquisitions and when we're talking about signings, Rose Lavelle has to be included in terms of probably their biggest, most important signing, right? Uh, coming off of this offseason, another player alongside some of these other players that we were just talking about with the rain franchise saying, Hey, we're going to be moving forward with this core of group of players uh, for their foreseeable future. And I think when you're looking at that midfield, that absolutely stands out. Number one, Roosevelt does stand out. I mean, she always stands out on a roster in a training room on the pitch uh, at practice um, in a match. She just stands out, but it, it's the midfield overall, despite not having players like, uh, that they had from OL Reign and on loan last year. This midfield for OL Reign is still very lethal. It's it's something that other clubs look at. They circle. It's scouting reports. They're honed in on players like Rose Lavelle, like Angelina, like Jess Fishlock, like Megan Rapino, who is listed as a forward, but she can drop into the midfield. And Olympic gold medalist Quinn. There's just a lot of star power in the middle of the field for OL Reign, and that's their engine. That's where this team runs through, um, and it's proven to be very difficult for other teams to break down. And then uh, I think what's interesting is looking at how much power they have in the middle of the field for them, but also what's maybe missing up up top, I'm going to say they have Megan Rapino on this roster. They have Bethany Balser, who was a player that didn't get probably as much time as she wanted to in 2021, just in and out of the lineups and not a lot of consistency. Um, and then also Ziara King. This is another player that has had their spells and their bouts of really good soccer and really good ball movement and really good consistency on the pitch. I think adding Veronica Latsko into this forward line will help. OL Reign because they have all the power in the middle of the field with all of their big heavy hitters but does it translate to the front line if you can have your midfielders consistently uh, being a midfield role and then allow your forwards to be their forward role the midfield won't get as tired they won't have as many jobs to fulfill they won't have as many uh, boxes to check off and they can continue to do their job while the forwards do theirs. So uh, Veronica Latsko is a player that I want to see her develop a little bit with this OL Reign team and especially under, especially under Laura Harvey throughout the 2022 season, but um, not a huge roster compared to some of the other clubs that have laid out their preseason roster. This one is very manageable, very oh, manageable yeah. for L Laura Harvey and OL Reign. I think when you're looking across these lines, even though it's maybe not as big as some other preseason rosters, right? You can look through each of the lines and kind of find some standout players, ones who will probably help anchor each specific line with also sort of having a little bit of different depth, right? For them to take a look at when we looked at those big losses, right? And then when we look at this preseason roster, we see, you know, a, a player like Le Somer, right? No longer are going to be available for, for, for that attack. Uh, the, Somebody like, you know, Maro Zen, who was absolutely integral, right, uh, you know, for uh, that midfield and how it looked in, in terms of the attack. But despite them not being there, having, a, you know, the, the reigning MVP, right, uh, signing up uh, Lose, uh, Rose Lavelle for, for an extended contract, right, even, uh, you know, seeing the return of somebody, uh, you know, in Angelina, right, the, uh, the, the Brazilian international who can help sort of, uh, you know, get different looks in the attack. But they also still have a very steady presence with somebody like Quinn in that mix, someone who was essential, right, to this midfield down the stretch. And quite frankly, what we're seeing them take this next step on the international stage, how they just become this sort of uh, integral figure when it comes to being able to both spearhead an attack or shut things down, uh, looking much better with them on the pitch versus off the pitch, right? Mm -hmm. So despite those losses, maybe even looking at the options in the depth here, Still got to say, like, if everything goes okay, if everyone stays healthy, it still looks like a pretty solid midfield on paper, right? But we got to see that come to life, uh, you know, in uh, on the pitch and, and in games for sure. 
I'm with you uh, with the points that you made about the attack. How is that going to look in terms of their forward options uh, and in terms of how that's going to look moving forward? When we're looking at all of these lines and when we're thinking of an ideal starting 11, right, I think there's a ton of players here that you can point out and say they're likely to be locks come that opening day right when that whistle happened you you're looking across that we're talking a lot about the midfield and we can obviously choose players there i think maybe the biggest opportunity might be in that goalkeeper position yeah. right who's going to impress and maybe that leads us to maybe some different areas in which to take a look at for this roster when it comes to ol rain and we're looking at young prospects to keep 